everybody! I decided it was time to share my secret for getting outstanding writing in the early years. Many years ago, when I was at teacher training college, I asked my lecturer, how do you get children to be good at writing? At the time, I was in the later years, and the lecturer said to me, oh, don't worry about that. By the time children get to key stage two, they will be able to write. However, when I had a year two class and I had children with special educational needs who couldn't write, I realised that I didn't have the skills necessary to bring their writing on. It wasn't until I went to reception, I was given additional training in the teaching of writing that I learnt those all important skills. So today I'm going to share a very simple resource that I was given many years ago but it worked brilliantly. Quite simply, from getting a child from being a non-writer to a writer, we all need to know the very basic steps of progress they make. So this grid was given to me. It is quite small, but don't worry. We will look at each step later on in a blown up format so you can see it quite clearly. But what I did was I had one of these at the front of each book and I used it as a guide to give children their next target. So as they achieved one objective, I then knew which objective to give them next. So I had a very clear and systematic way of moving their writing forwards. There are 10 stages, and it goes from children just writing shapes down to writing words with spacing and developing their punctuation. The process really begins at preschool, so this is useful for preschool teachers, reception teachers and those um, teachers who have children with special educational needs because sometimes we don't know how to move their writing on. So the child begins the process of writing at step A by just making random shapes on paper. In the early days of reception, I would promote this by having star activities, which I expected the children to do. I'd have a clipboard with their names or a sticker they were familiar with. I would ask them to put a little mark by their name or picture once they'd completed the activity. And then once they could write their name, I would get them to sign the clipboard to say they'd done it. Very simple, but it's just used to letting them see that writing has a purpose. Stage B is sometimes found at preschool and often in reception where the child is still writing shapes but also including random letters. What I would suggest you do here is when they're in free play have some sound mats with letters on so the children can use those as well. Once the child has achieved this I would then make a new target. It might then be to write letters only. Stage C is writing letters only. They may not be in a straight line, it may be a combination of capitals and lowercase, but that's okay to start with. Once children are writing letters, you then want them to write letters with initial sounds, and that can be supported, and that's what I call stage D. So that would mean sitting with the teacher or another adult, maybe saying what they want to write, and you asking the child, what does the word begin with? Which sound can you hear? And point them in the right direction. So writing might look like this, where the child has tried to write, my cat is black, but with the help of an adult has been able to say that my starts with mm, cat starts with k, etc. Step E is when they can do this unsupported, I have put unaided, but I think if a child has a sound mat and they're working it out on their own without an adult prompting them, then that, that's fine. The natural progression would be from writing initial sounds to writing sounds within words, and I call that step F, and again, I would have a sound mat handy for them to use. You will see here that an attempt has been um, made to write it is raining, they've got the it, they've got the s in is, and they've had an attempt at rain. No finger spaces, but at this stage that's fine. 
The next step, stage G, would be to see sight vocabulary developing in their writing. Just simple words like to, it and in. I used to have um, various cards dotted around the room and on tables. I would usually sort of word set within pictures of animals and transport and houses, etc. Stage H is writing words in a string. So here we've had an attempt at writing, I went to the shop. All the sounds aren't there, but we can phonetically spell it out. So that's fine. No finger spaces once again, but at this stage, that's okay. I'm sure you probably guessed what the next stage was going to be. Yes, stage I is writing words with spacing. Children find this quite tricky and there are lots of fun little gadgets you can use. You could um, have a picture of a hand or a finger and you could laminate it and then the child puts it between the words as they write. That's always quite handy as a reminder. So we've got to the shop, lovely finger spaces. The last stage I'm going to talk about today is stage J, where the child is beginning to develop punctuation. That might mean capital letters, four stops, it could be a question mark or an exclamation mark. And I would see this um, with children coming towards the end of their reception year. Before I finish, I just want to say a little bit about the grid once more. I just want to share that it gave me so much confidence in choosing the next step for the child. And it was you know, really useful to watch their progress, especially when you dated it. And it was very, very good evidence. Of course, as well as having the grid, you do need um, outstanding phonics teaching. And you do need lots of opportunities in the learning environment for children to practice these skills. So for me, the writing table was key. I turned it into an office, so they felt like receptionists. I had a drawer of paper clips, um, stampers, lots of different coloured paper in the forms of pads, clipboards, lots and lots of pens, pencils, rubbers, etc. I just tried to make it really interesting and exciting for the children. Some days I turned it into a post office, sometimes a travel agent. It was just to keep that motivation for writing. And of course, I always had sound mats there so they could see the correct letter formation as well. Also, in my home corner, I always had writing opportunities. For example, if I had it as a shop, I would have um, little books for shopping lists or receipts. There are lots of things you can do around the room. Um, for example, when we were doing um, playing with sand, I had like coins in the sand to find real words and nonsense words. I'd have a clipboard there and say, okay, write the real words you found. If they're doing some model making, you could have blank cards where they can write their own labels. So there are a whole host of things that children can do to practice their writing skills. So I said at the start of my um, video that I would share some lessons to um, give them phonics skills. I have two series on YouTube and they start from phase one. Phase one is so, so important and it's often a phase that gets missed, but children need to build the foundations so that when they come to learn their sounds, they can use them and they can blend and segment. So there's lots and lots of lessons on that. And then I have um, a comprehensive phase two program where children go from learning initial sounds to blending and segmenting to writing and reading sentences. You will find the links for those on my YouTube channel. Well, I hope this has been interesting and I can't stress enough how much confidence having something like this gave me when I wasn't entirely sure how to move children's learning on. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please would you subscribe to my channel? It would be really helpful. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.